Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm talking about planning any spring chick additions, either to an existing flock or if you're just getting into chickens for the first time. I'm out trying to get some vitamin D today, a little outdoor time, even though it's freezing, but it has me thinking about spring, probably like many of us, which really is just right around the corner. If you've been keeping chickens for any length of time, you've probably fallen prey to the live baby chicks in feed stores and the impulse buys. I think that happens to the best of us and there's not necessarily anything wrong with it but there is a better way to go about it. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the eight steps that I like to take for the most smooth and peaceful and usually the most successful chick integration experience. And some of these are ones that you can definitely get started on right now and probably should if you want spring to go even smoother. Number one is to take stock of what you have, not only the number of chickens, but also take stock of your available space, take stock of the equipment that you have. You wanna take stock of how much feed, if you have some feed, or not. Step one is getting a good inventory of what you have. You'd be surprised how much money this can save you. Many chicken keepers end up finding themselves with multiple brooders and multiple feeders that they don't need just because the other ones were dusty or uh, tucked away where they didn't realize they had them. So step one is just to take stock of what you have, especially if it's for things that you can't necessarily add more to like space. In line with that step is to make a plan to expand. So if you have more space that you can add to your run or if you have more coop space that you can build, this is the time to make a plan to do that. You wanna make sure that you can safely and healthfully accommodate whatever chickens you plan to get in the spring. We have all fallen victim to chicken math, so we're just trying to avoid any stress that would come with any lack of planning later on. Number two, now that we have an organized list of everything that we have, we're gonna make a list of what we need. And I like to just have one side on the left be everything I have, and on the right be everything I need, and then I cross off everything I need when I see it on the left, and then I'm just left with the things that I really do need that I don't have in storage somewhere. Some things that are always on my list of things that I need to have on hand and ready to go when the chicks arrive is a radiant heat brooder, that's what I like to use instead of heat lamps, a feeder, a waterer, training treats, feed, uh, I like to use electrolyte mixes with their water to give them an extra boost, bedding of course, Depending on the method that I'm gonna be using to raise them, I may or may not need a large brooder to keep them in. Um, I've liked to use these little playpen tents in the past, but this year we actually raised chickens just outside in the coop where they were gonna be going. If you already have an established flock, that's not necessarily gonna be the easiest way to do it. So I'll link everything for you below as usual. I'll link everything I'm talking about, but I also just have an entire list of everything that we have used and or things that are helpful for raising chicks. As far as the training treats go, the ones that we like to use, like I've talked about in other videos, are black soldier fly larva by Grubterra specifically. Grubterra did partner with us on today's video. We like the black soldier fly larva because they have a lot more calcium than mealworms do. They're just very nutritious for the chickens. We know where they come from. And of course, most importantly, not only are they healthy, but our chickens absolutely love them. So as usual, you guys can use our discount code Okabode for 10% off. And I left a link for those below as well. The other biggest thing is they're really helpful for teaching your chickens to come when called. Cause whenever they hear that bag, they know they're getting something good. It's not gonna be mediocre scraps from the kitchen like peelings, which they don't really think are worth coming for much of the time. So they definitely make my life a lot easier. And I think even though they don't know it, they make the chickens lives a lot easier too. Number three, another really good one to do right in the winter is write down a list of your needs, your desires, what your flock is lacking. I like to get it all down on paper because then it makes selecting the breeds a lot more intentional and a lot more helpful in the future. So for example, we this year decided we wanted breeds that were going to be able to sustain themselves easier. They're gonna require less feed. They are going to evade predators better. They may not lay 300 eggs a year, but they're gonna be able to reproduce really easily. So that is why I landed on Icelandic chickens for the chickens that I want to add to my flock this year, at least as of right now. And that means I really have to plan ahead because pretty much the only way I can get those is by fertile hatching eggs. They're not gonna be in any local stores or hatcheries. So by planning out exactly what you wanna get out of your flock, then you're gonna be able to know which breeds are gonna be best for you and you're not gonna be impulse buying. Number four, once you have a rough idea of kind of the number of chickens that you want to get and then the breeds that you wanna get, 
This is probably like dangerous to say, but I like to add in a little extra. It's kind of my contingency in case some of the chicks that I expect to be hens end up being roosters, or maybe we have some predator attacks, which means we lose some chickens. Of course, there's always a mystery death component. Chicks and chickens seem to be really good at finding ways to get themselves killed. Another one is disease. A lot of times chicks will come with deformities or diseases, which may or may not be something that they can actually live through. So I like to work in a contingency, uh, add at least a couple chicks more in there. The next step is to consider what option you want to use to actually obtain your baby chicks. It is not just all about ordering chicks from a catalog or a website and getting them in the mail. Although that is one very popular option. You usually pick them up at the post office. If it's your first time, know that they don't ship them to your house generally, at least in my experience. They call you and have you pick them up from the post office directly. Some other options, uh, ones that maybe are a little less prone to accident or disease or dead chicks is like a local pickup. Other people like to order from breeders, especially if they're local. We have a really hard time finding breeders where we are, but if that's something you can find, that's probably gonna be your best bet for a really high quality chick. Another option that I think is probably more humane than shipping live chicks and one that I'm moving towards is fertile hatching eggs. Now the downside of fertile hatching eggs is you don't know that you're getting pullets if you live in the suburbs. You're gonna end up, if you get fertile hatching eggs, with roughly half roosters. And uh, so I wouldn't recommend it if you can't have roosters because then you just end up with a lot of people trying homes for a lot of roosters. So it, it's kind of a catch 22. Uh, you have to decide depending on your area what will be best for you. But since we live on a farm now, I'm gonna be going more the fertile hatching egg route. Then you kind of have to decide, are you gonna put them in an incubator? Are you gonna try and let broody hens hatch them? Uh, I've been looking at incubators because I'm gonna be incubating eggs for the first time this year. So if you guys want a video on that, let me know. Um, definitely not something I'm experienced at or something I've done before, but should be a lot of fun. Or you can always hatch them from your own flock too. So search your options. It is not all just mail order chicks or picking up at the local feed store. If you plan ahead a little bit, you might have a little better breed selection than you would have otherwise. Now that you know what kind, uh, now that you know where you're gonna be getting them from, it's time to plan the timing. So if you are gonna be hatching some eggs, you're definitely gonna wanna get those eggs a little sooner than you need to put the chicks outside. Obviously, they're gonna need another roughly 28 days, I wanna say it is, something like that. Um, so depending on, once you've decided how you're gonna be doing it, then you plan out your calendar, plan out when you want the eggs or chicks shipped to you or picked up. I definitely like to have a calendar ahead of time so that I can plan other things around it. We like to plan getting chicks around like we don't go on vacation at certain times in the chick raising process. So definitely good to plan that calendar ahead of time. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but I do have a chicken planner PDF download on our Etsy shop currently. I don't know if we're gonna be sticking with Etsy forever, but I'll leave the link for that below. Just kind of help plan your flock and track your flock over this season and future seasons. You can always print out as many of them as you need to use for your flock. So uh, if you don't have that already, I'll leave the link for that below. The next thing you should do is make sure you have an integration plan ahead of time. You can't just throw baby chicks in with an established flock. Um, I did make a whole video for how I like to do that and I will link that for you below. Uh, a few things that are in that video, which I'll just mention quickly here. These play pens, we have two of them now. We find they're really good for integrating chicks with older chickens because you can just kind of prop the door open and the chicks can run in and out. They also have covers to protect them from air predators during the time where we like to introduce them to the outdoors if we've been raising them inside. We give them playtime outside so we're not just throwing them outside when they move out to the coop, especially with new strangers and have no idea what's going on. So the play pens, the covers, those have been huge for us in integrating chicks with older chickens. But if you want a step by step, you can watch the video that I'm linking for you below. Finally, the last thing that I'll say is it is really good to have everything set up before they arrive. This is for some reason so hard to do. It's so easy to just be like, oh, I've got more time. I've got more time. I've got three weeks or oh, I've got one week. Oh, they're not coming for another day. I can set it up tonight, you know? And it's for some reason hard for me to make sure everything is set up before they arrive. But on the rare occasion when I have done it, it is so wonderful to bring home chicks to a just completely set up area with bedding and food and I can just set them out, dip their beaks and set them out, make sure they're all good. Um, it's just a lot less stressful than having to put the chicks on, you know, put them aside somewhere and, you know, the dogs are sniffing them and we're trying to set up the brooder, make sure it's heating up correctly and stuff. So I really recommend having everything set up making sure it's all working 
ahead of time. If you are getting chicks in spring, it might be a little excessive to set it up now in the dead of winter, but that's for us here in zone five. Uh, there's a lot of you I know who are in much more warmer, wonderful places than I am, and your chick timeline is actually a lot shorter than ours is now. So it's really never soon to get started on any of these things. So if you're excited for spring, you're excited for spring chicks specifically, and uh, you can't wait to get started like I can't either. These are things I like to do in the meantime to make sure I am planning the best flock possible for the next many years, because they live for quite a while, but especially the ones that I'm deciding to bring in this year. These steps really help in choosing the best breeds, having the best timeline, making sure everybody is healthy and squared away so that then when spring comes, you can just enjoy them. And for us, we like to work on the garden while the chicks are just doing their thing, growing and healthy as can be, if all goes according to plan. I would love to hear from you what you like to do to plan for baby chicks or kind of what your spring chick prep rituals are. I think it's a lot of fun. It's fun to have this downtime and it's fun to plan ahead and get excited. Thanks for watching today and we'll see you next time.